dogs offer many advantages to humans. They can detect drugs, rescue people, hunt together, guide the blind, and perform various other roles. They also enthusiastically greet their owners and show affection. So what about cats? Cats don't do anything for humans. Yet, they receive better treatment than dogs in reality. According to a report by the French Federation of Pet Food Manufacturers, FACO, in 2016, the number of pet cats in France reached 13.48 million, surpassing the number of pet dogs, which was 7.34 million. The beginning of symbiosis. Let's go back about 10,000 years when humans started agriculture. Let's look at it from the perspective of humans. As humans began farming, surplus produce accumulated. Therefore, they stored excess grains separately in warehouses and consumed a certain amount as needed. The problem was that these grain warehouses were like paradise for various rodents, including mice. Naturally, mice started inflicting damage to the grains as they swarmed into the warehouses. Consequently, various rodents were perceived as a threatening presence that harmed their food supply. Now let's consider the perspective of cats. Cats were no different. The grain warehouse, filled with numerous rodents, was a true heaven for cats as well. As a result, cats naturally took on the role of catching mice and, in turn, safeguarded human grains. In return, they received food from humans that was far superior in taste compared to their prey. In other words, humans, as caregivers, provide high quality food to cats, and cats, as hunters, protect human crops, thus starting a symbiotic relationship. However, when I brought the cat into the warehouse, I realized that it was much cuter than other animals. Humans are captivated by the cat's appearance, and as a result, some people start raising cats for free in their homes. For example, the Uz tribe in Kazakhstan, who lead a nomadic lifestyle and do not store grain separately, were raising pet cats. There was no specific reason, they simply assumed that they raised cats because they were cute. So, what exactly is the appeal of cuteness that prompts humans to bring in cats, provide them with food, and sustain them? The role of cuteness. To begin with, Cuteness is a concept derived from maternal instincts, as it induces parents to engage in nurturing behavior. By feeling a sense of cuteness towards their own children, humans experience a strong desire to protect vulnerable infants. Conrad Lawrence, a Nobel laureate in physiology or medicine and an animal behaviorist, explains the characteristics of cuteness through the concept of the baby schema. Raising offspring involves significant risks and requires substantial investment from the parent's perspective. Nevertheless, despite these risks, parents are compelled to raise their children successfully so that their genes can be passed on to future generations. As a result, adults develop a preference for cuteness in their offspring, and they evolve to care for babies extremely cautiously, attentively, and affectionately, without expecting anything in return. Let's consider the characteristics that people find cute in babies. Babies have small bodies, large heads, round faces, big eyes, and small noses. When adults see these baby-like features, it induces activity in the amygdala and orbitofrontal cortex of the brain, ultimately leading to a desire to protect them. This phenomenon is commonly observed not only in humans but also in most primates, mammals, and birds. Furthermore, Humans, in particular, have an exceptionally broad spectrum of cuteness and tend to react sensitively to it. Many great apes, such as chimpanzees, bonobos, orangutans, and gorillas, as well as other old-world monkey species, often carry their infants in their arms 24 hours a day for several weeks to months. And if someone else tries to touch their child, they immediately show a refusal response and display aggression. They carry the baby everywhere cuddle and constantly examine their appearance, fulfilling the baby's every need. However, humans are completely different. Humans engage in communal living and cooperative parenting because it is efficient. For example, among the Ida tribe in the Philippines, when a newborn baby arrives, all members of the tribe take turns holding the baby, patting their cheeks, and smelling them. Humans had to engage in child care within a wide range, not only for their own children but also occasionally for grandchildren, nephews, and cousins, as needed. 
Therefore, many scholars speculate that if humans had basic baby-like characteristics, they would have evolved to feel cuteness even towards offspring that are not their own. This inclination extended to the offspring of animals such as puppies, kittens, pandas, and penguins, and even to inanimate emoticon characters with baby-like features. This characteristic evolved powerfully. Neoteny Animals If cats were to grow up and lose their appearance from their kittenhood, an unimaginable number of stray cats would be born. However, there is no need to worry too much. Cats are neoteny animals. Neoteny animals refer to creatures that retain the appearance of their infancy even as adults. This is precisely why we find dogs cuter than wolves and cats more endearing than leopards. Although they belong to different species, dogs and cats have even shorter snouts, round heads, and flat faces, and these features are maintained throughout their lives even after they reach adulthood. Therefore, this serves as a key factor for humans to protect and care for dogs and cats, even when they become adults. The reason why cats are aloof. Cats are aloof and sometimes exhibit behavior that can be seen as arrogant. They may randomly lash out and give a punch to another object for no apparent reason. This behavior is in stark contrast to dogs. Cats have had a relatively shorter period of domestication compared to dogs. As a result, they are more likely to retain a sense of wildness, and humans have not actively manipulated cat genetics or selectively bred new domesticated breeds. As we learned earlier, in the early stages of coexistence between cats and humans, cats were trained to hunt rodents in human grain storage facilities. Therefore, it would have been more rational for humans to preserve the wildness in cats rather than removing it, as removing their wildness would have led to a decline in their hunting abilities. Why women prefer cats more? As mentioned earlier, the feeling of cuteness triggers a behavioral response related to protection and nurturing. Both men and women should ideally feel the need to protect cats, but women tend to have a stronger preference for cats. Firstly, this is because maternal instincts are generally stronger than paternal instincts, and nurturing, which includes caregiving, is biologically closer to the role of woman. Therefore, women, more often than men, tend to care for cats with more affection and caution. They provide free food to stray cats on the streets, and even young girls engage in play and care as if they were cuddling their own dolls. Can cats really become family? Let's pay attention to the fact that the proportion of people raising cats has surged as the number of single-person households increases. It is also important to note that humans don't simply raise cats solely because they find them cute. If that were the case, humans would have been satisfied with having convenient and low-maintenance alternatives like cat dolls or various cute character dolls at home. The reason why cats as animals, have become companions for humans is that they provide a sense of companionship and emotional support, fulfilling inherent human needs through social interaction. Therefore, the increasing number of single-person households with cats can easily be inferred as an instinctive inclination towards maternal care that would naturally be directed towards offspring in the wild. In other words, it can be understood that cats cohabiting with humans in households can be considered as substitutes for actual family members for some individuals. Cats equals babies. If you browse through Instagram or YouTube, you'll find numerous adorable animal videos. You can also easily find videos where owners play pranks on their pet dogs. However, if you read the comments section, you come across some people who refer to pets as babies and express concerns like, Pulling their arms like this could hurt the baby's arm or such behavior is not good for the pet's emotions. Despite these situations being lighthearted and not posing any real danger, it's not difficult to find cases where people display an overly protective attitude towards their pets, treating them as babies. Human babies are born more vulnerable than any other mammal. Due to the increase in head size, human infants need to stay longer in the womb, often being born prematurely. In other words, Human babies require much more cautious and careful handling compared to other animals. Even the slightest impact could cause serious physical harm to them. That's why in the past, when there were no dedicated baby cribs, soft and warm blankets, or bumper guards, human mothers in isolated hunter-gatherer environments always held their babies close, handling them with great care and protection, constantly vigilant of any potential harm, no matter how minor, that could befall their infants. 
To understand the perspective of those who commented on pets as babies, you can put yourself in the shoes of a mother. From their point of view, the fact that such pranks don't actually harm the pet is not particularly significant. Their words are not the result of systematic and rational thinking processes, but rather instinctive defense mechanisms driven by the innate desire to protect the adorable kittens. They had to intervene and prevent the malicious pranks inflicted upon the small and fragile babies in the video, assuming the role of a mother. Now we might have a better understanding of why humans love, protect, and care for cats so intensely. I hope this video has been helpful. Subscribing and liking the video are a great help thanks for watching.